Hello and welcome to what may be the last video in this Connect series. Um, today we're going to just be working on a rect trigger for all of our trigger points that we created in the last video. It's not going to be anything too crazy. We're going to be making a new script for our rect trigger as well as putting an event in our measure depth script that we've been working on for what feels like an eternity. <laughs> so what we're going to do first is that we're going to create a canvas to put our rect trigger essentially. And this is going to be the basis of pretty much all of the hit detection. So once we have this, you can hook up pieces of functionality to this trigger and to make it do things when a hand or a piece of the data enters that rect. Maybe it was a bit redundant for that explanation, but no worries. So let's go ahead and we're just going to create a normal canvas. We're actually going to create a canvas image. So we can go ahead and, well, we can put on the viewer. Shouldn't have done that. <laughs> let's go ahead and actually create a canvas because we want, for this reason, we, I just want to kind of keep it separate. Um, and then we'll create an image and just so we can see it, let's just make it black and then we have to drag that above that one, I think. Or this one. Oh, oh no, we have to change the sort order. Silly me. There we go. And I'm not sure if we have to change any things for these settings, but I know we're going to have to go ahead and we're going to create a rect trigger script. Just like that. And before I forget, we can go ahead and we can drop it onto our image that we just created. And we can just call this rect trigger just so we don't lose track of it. Trigger. There we go. And I think the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to open up our measure depth script so we can add an event to it that are so we can give data to this rect trigger. So let's go ahead and open that. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and put this right at the top. It's going to be a, a public delegate. That's going to return void. And we're just going to call it new trigger points, where we're going to be passing out a vector two, and we're just going to call trigger points. Probably should have done this in the last video when we created all the trigger points, but it's no big deal. I, was, I think that was a really long video already. <laughs> So, and then we're just gonna, for simplicity's sake, we're gonna make it a static event. If you wanna do this like a different, you know, a different way, you're more than welcome to. If you wanna attach it to a singleton, or you don't wanna make it static at all, or have any statics involved. So let's go ahead and make our T is uppercase, and we'll initialize that to null. All right, so once that's done, we just need to go ahead and scroll down here. And we're just gonna go into our update function. Just gonna expand that, and then, Within our, once we've created our trigger points, we're just gonna call that new, that new event we just created. But before we do that, we're gonna put an if statement to make sure that something is actually subscribed to our event. And if we actually have any data. So we're just saying, hey, or is anyone, does anyone want this data? And do we have any data to actually send out? So if we don't have any data, then we're not gonna be doing anything. So then we're gonna call that event and we're gonna pass it our trigger points. Simple enough. And let's just double check that that's a static so we can access it from our rect trigger. So let's go ahead and let's open up that new rect trigger script that we just made. All right, so this is gonna be a pretty simple script. All we're really gonna be doing is subscribing that to event and maybe doing a little bit of functionality for how many pieces of data need to be within the rect to actually trigger it, as well as getting the rect transform and all that good stuff. So the first thing that we're gonna do is that we're going to make a public int that we're just going to call sensitivity. We may not need this, you know, per se, but we'll have it um, just in case, just so you can kind of get the idea of what is a what we could possibly do with this. So we're just going to make a slider as well out of it, so it's going to be a range of zero to ten, and then we're just going to make a public bool that's just going to be is triggered. And we're we'll initialize that to false. And we'll also, if you want to, you can hide it in the inspector, but I think I'm, I'm not gonna do that. And then we'll need a couple of private variables. We're gonna need one to store the rec trigger that we're gonna be checking all of our points inside of. So it's gonna be a private rec transform, rec transform, and we're gonna initialize that to null. And then we're gonna have a private image, m, m image equals null. We need to use our Unity Engine UI namespace so we can have access to that. 
engine.ui. All right, and then we're gonna have some of our really basic events for setting everything up. So we're gonna start with our awake, naturally. Void awake, there we go. And we're gonna sub be subscribing to that event we just created. So it's gonna be measure depth dot on trigger points. And we're gonna need to be creating a function down below this before we can actually subscribe anything. So let's just go ahead and comment that out. And let's make that function so we can go ahead and subscribe it. So we're just gonna call it private void on trigger points, where we're gonna be accepting an argument of a list of vector twos that we're just gonna be calling trigger points. So add our curly braces. And now we can actually like, let's subscribe to that now. So it's gonna be plus equals on trigger points. There we go. Let's go ahead and copy this line. And we're gonna be making it on destroy. So it's be a private void on destroy. And that's so we can unsubscribe. And that's very important to unsubscribe right when you're subscribing to it because there have been instances when I started using events and I forgot about it. And when you maybe have a project that you're playing through multiple times or something like that, you may actually be subscribing to an event twice. And then that functionality is gonna be running a couple times. I remember I had a bug that I couldn't figure out for the longest time that caused one of my animation sequences to just completely break and I couldn't, I couldn't figure out why. So just make sure you do that as a, as a quick side note. So let's go ahead and let's get our rec transform as well. So it's our M rec transform and we'll be getting our component and just getting the rec transform. Pretty self-explanatory. And we're gonna get the image as well if we want to. And this is just gonna let us know that we've actually touched it. So let's go ahead and get that component image. And there we go. Okay. And then I think a lot of our functionality is gonna be in this on trigger points, just for simplicity's sake. And I think um, we're gonna start out with an if statement. And we're gonna just simply be asking this component if it's enabled or not. So we know whether to actually trigger this. So let's go ahead and say, if it's not enabled, then we wanna return. And we're gonna also be creating an integer that we're gonna be calling count, initialize that to zero. And now what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be going through all of our trigger points, basically. So for each vector two point in trigger points, And then forever, for whatever reason, I needed to do this, which was getting our Y value from our trigger points and actually flipping it so it worked properly. You may or may not have to do this. I, um, this is my first time working with this sort of data. So, you know, bound to make a mistake here or there. I also got the camera. Okay, let's also do this. Just quick side note. Instead, what I actually did was I used camera dot main and thing is this is going to be called a lot because every frame in our update in our measure depth we're going to be putting out new trigger point data and one thing you do not want to do with camera dot main is constantly be running it in something like that because it's just a tag lookup and it never caches it so you're constantly going to be looking for a camera and it's just it could be very expensive so let's go ahead and let's put a camera up here And camera equals null. And we'll just get it right here. And this is in camera equals camera dot main. Camera dot main is fine for every once in a while, but running it in something like this is not very smart. <laughs> and I'm not going to set that example for you. All right. So, and we need that because we actually need to get the pixel height of it uh, so we can flip it. So we do get the pixel height of our camera and we're going to minus our point dot y and that effectively flips it. All right, now comes the actual, the actual stuff. So we're going to have an if statement. We're going to be using the rect transform utility, which has a bunch of cool little functions and things like that that I've never used, but has this cool little thing like rectangle contains screen point or screen point to local point and rectangle, which I think I've used like once or twice, but it has those really weird things that you were like, who would ever use this? And then you, then one day you have this really obscure issue and it turns out it works. So we're going to be using rectangle contains screen point. We need to pass in two things. It's going to be our rect, which if you remember, we got the rect already. So we're just going to be putting in our rect transform. 
and then we're going to be putting in our new screen point. And if you remember, we've already created a vector two, which is a our point position with our point x, and we've just taken that point y and we've flipped it. So we're actually just going to be able to put in our flipped y. And then once that's done, we're going to be adding to our count. And that's just basically saying like, oh hey, like this rec transform of this rec trigger contains this point, so we're just going to add to our count, which is going to be working with our sensitivity that we set up previously. If you want to use that, you could do it that if any point is within the rec trigger, or maybe if you want a to ensure that like the entire hand or a object or something like that is within the rect, you know, you could do it like that. And for simplicity's sake, you could potentially put another event within this rec trigger to do any functionality or subscribe to any functionality once the sensitivity has been met essentially. So what we're going to be doing here for simplicity is just saying if our count is greater than our m sensitivity. And then that's basically saying, oh hey, like there's something here. We're going to say m is triggered. We're going to set that to true. And we can just say it set the color of our image. And I believe it's black right now, so let's just set it to red. Color dot color dot red. There we go. All right. And I think I think that's all we need actually. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity. Double check that that's connected. And let's make sure it compiles as well, because we're going to need to double check our slider here, right? So we have our slider for our sensitivity. And we have our Boolean checkbox for is triggered. So we're just going to leave this at five. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on my connect. So give me just a second. All right. So my connect is now all set up. We have our depth set up, our wall, and all of our good stuff. So let's go ahead and let's play. And if we hit spacebar, we're going to have our rect around our play space with all of our little dots and our little rect trigger that we just created. And so we can see this a bit easier actually. Let's go ahead and let's lower the alpha a little bit. So 150 maybe. All right. And actually, let's go ahead and maximize this as well. And we'll go ahead and hit spacebar so that updates to that screen space. Now let's go ahead and see if this works. So if you notice there, I actually just put a few points of data in there. So it's actually not going to trigger until we have at least five pieces of information within our trigger. All right, and there we go. So that's the basics. Um, if you want to, you can obviously create something for doing trigger in and trigger out to sort of replicate what's already being done within Unity. And this can be used as the basis for a lot of Kinect games. So hopefully you found this useful. Hopefully you found it interesting. If you have any questions, I'm obviously up to maybe doing like one or two more videos to elaborate on this or maybe even make a functional game about it. But naturally, I'm going to take a break from the Kinect a little bit for now. But until then, um, you know, hopefully I'll see you next time.